Okay, back. As I was starting to say before I had my coughing fit, our boy Mark is sticking this same kind of language about the false Christ farther down, okay, than Christ did, or Matthew's packaging of what Christ said. And he's sticking it farther down than he did, and he's sticking it much farther down, in fact, 70 years or so, past what Luke did. So Luke moved the text, moved the years up, okay, as you might remember, to 112. Christ had, had done this at 169. And now Mark is doing it at 186. Now, of course, your first your first hint is should be, oh, it's going to happen again. Yeah, history repeats itself. All right. In this particular case, you add 30 and you get 1816. I mean, I'm sorry, 186 and 30 should be 191. Um, I'm sorry. 186 plus 30 216 which is the same big period that our boy Paul focused on now here's where you start to get some real sense of what these gospels do why there are multiple ones okay Mark is writing after Peter's dead Jude's dead James has long been dead like you know he was dead even earlier than Peter and earlier than Paul. Um, Paul, of course, died in 68, just the year before. That's how come I suspect that Mark is the writer of the book of Hebrews because he was with Luke and Timothy. And Timothy gets released. That's uh, Hebrews 13:23. So he's so the person writing is either Luke or Mark. I mean, it could be some third person we don't know about, but we only know that those two people were with um, Paul. And the letter is coming from Italy. All right. And when it says Italy, it really means, you know, Rome. But they can't say that because they don't want anybody to know who they are. Because, you know, it was a really bad time. And the release means it's because Vespasian got in power, and that was what you know, new emperors did is they pardoned whoever was the bad emperor that had been there before. I'm not sure that, that Paul Paul would have been killed just after Nero died, so it might have been Galba or Arthur or Vitellius who actually released Timothy. Okay, it might not have been this patient. But the point is is that this is an update and therefore takes into account all the prior divine writ, even though it's a gospel that uh, in its concepts and topics has to precede all that. So when you're reading Mark and you're seeing this at a lower number and then you think about what you already know now from Matthew, from Luke, especially from Paul, and then Peter plays on Paul, you would know all that. 216 A.D. Oh yeah. Okay, because that's that's the that's Ephesians 1 9. Alright. And Paul really makes that a climactic verse about church, because Mysterion is the key word for church. And 1 9 is the lead in to the summation of the trial. Okay? And it turns out that during those actual years, especially if you were coming up on those actual years and you're reading this, Kiliasm was all the rage. Everybody thought the Lord was going to come back in Rome. Big debate during these years. So everybody was deceived. Everybody was talking about Christ coming back or speaking for Christ. That was all the rage during this period. Okay? All of it. And, of course, as a result of that, you get into between here and here. It's funny how war causes growth. So these are sevens. Um, 
This is the crisis of the third century that Paul spent so much time on. Okay, so if you're coming into these years, see this is this is uh, 247 during the Decius persecution. This is 268, just after um, excuse me, uh, Gallienus has died. Carus has taken his place, and this is the rise of Diocletian. So if you're living during this period, you know exactly, I mean, this makes so much sense to you to read this if you're going through that history at, in those years. It's like, oh yeah, I get that. I mean, go read it yourself now. Go back. And then read this text covering these same years. Remember, it always at 30. And it's like, wow, this is so precise and satirical. Because this is the rise starting in here. Okay, starting in here is the rise of all that false doctrine by Tertullian and Origen and Irenaeus. And before them, there was a century of it. It's just really bilious stuff. The so-called church fathers, the so-called ap apostolic fathers, the pre-Nicaea fathers. It's just bilious. Anti-Semitic, making up all this junk about Mary and, and, and saying that your works save you. I mean, come on. Okay? Just go read it yourself. Just look it up at ccel.org. Church Fathers. And start reading. And throw up. Bring Pepto-Bismol. Pepto okay, so then this is going to be real relevant to you. And it's, he stops. Matthew, uh, Mark stops and goes much slower about the time much more precise but he especially gets real precise in here now Matthew didn't say much about it hi they're gonna deliver you over Luke adds a, a clause or two about hi don't you know they're gonna deliver you over and don't worry about what you're gonna say but Mark turns this into a whole section. Yeah, and you know what section this is? Constantine. The worst persecution of Christians and Jews occurs during these very years. This is when the Revelation 17 beast begins under Constantine. I maintain Revelation 17 is a prediction of Constantine as a trend of history. Fake church. And this is where it starts. Constantine basically comes into a sort of prominence at here, 310. In 310 AD, he's already escaped um, being under Galerius as a hostage. Galerius was the Caesar of Diocletian. He's run to uh, Britain. He's, his father's just died. And in 310 AD, you know what he tells the troops in order to get them to rally to him? Apollo gave me a vision of four laurel wreaths, and I'll have a hundred and twenty years of victory if, if, if you follow me. That was in 310 A.D. Two years later. Two. Guy S. Two years later. Instead of saying it's Apollo, he says it's Christ. And the famous in hoc signo vinces. Yeah, right. In other words, they just shifts which god it is to get the troops to rally to him. He doesn't care. It's a political ploy. Alright? So, our boy Constantine ends up going to the, you know, taking over Rome, taking over Maxenius at the Battle of Milvian Bridge. Very funny story. And then, um, he ends up doing battle. Glarius dies in 310 right here. Licinius takes over, and it's all about Constantine beating Licinius during this period here. Starting in here, it's just Constantine. And this is when he builds New Rome, and he has the Council of Nicaea, and all that stuff. Actually, you could say it really kind of starts at the end of this. Odinon. That's really clever, by the way. Odinon Tauta. Five years. 
Okay, 297 and 30 is 297 plus 30 equals 327. When was the Council of Nicaea? 325. Tauta is two syllables. So all the known birth pangs, the birth of the unity of church and state, the birth of what would become Revelation 17, the birth of the beast, the birth of what the, of the real Catholic Church occurs at the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. And it wasn't just one. They had little councils before that. 325 was the final official one. Nicaea is, is in Anatolia, in, the, in what we call Turkey. It wasn't in Rome. There were all kinds of little meetings and all the church people who wanted to be political because God wasn't good enough for them. They all were jockeying for position and power just like the people around Trump are doing right now. Oh, let's, we want to have political power. We don't care about the Bible. We want political power so we can defeat all the other Christians we don't like. And Constantine pres presided over it. And then they slap on something like, Well, we're going to decide what the books of the Bible are because, you know, God isn't good enough. We decide, not him. Yeah, birth pangs. Birth pangs of what? Tribulation. And so now begins a period of persecution and you can just read about it in any history book. This is church against church. This is Christian against Christian. Constantine's own sons will end up fighting after he dies in 337 which is kind of cute because that's right here. They're all going to fight over the definition of God. Is God one or three? They're already doing it in the Hippodrome, you know, in the New Rome, which we call Constantinople, which we now call Istanbul. They would be fighting. Millions and millions of people will be dying over whether God is one or three. Why don't you just look in the Bible and you'll know? Why do you have to fight about it? But they weren't looking in the Bible. They don't care about the Bible. The Bible's a relic. It's something you copy but never learn. Yeah, that's what was going on here, too. Codex Vaticanus or Sinaiticus, probably Vaticanus, is supposed to be one of the books that Constantine ordered be made, you know, one of the copies of the Bible. Yeah, everybody copied it, but they didn't read it. And when you look at Sinaiticus, when you look at the text, you can understand why. Look at this. See, this is what was supposed to be one of the books. That's Pisa. That's the good one. This is Sinaiticus. This is Vaticanus. Look at this. Now it's good in terms of its content, but honey, how are you going to learn anything from this? Look at this. Look at this. One line taxi. Da 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 da. And all the letters are just run together. Breaking a word in the middle. Just going on, making sure that we got, we have a nice pretty column. How can you find anything? Do you know how much hard work it was for the scholars to, to, to be able to do this? See, that's readable. This is not. So they would just copy and see I'm a good Christian because I copied those letters. But I don't know what they mean. Okay? It's ridiculous. So yeah, that's what they did. And it's all infighting here. And all this text is about you're going to be delivered over by the authorities. You're going to don't worry about what you're going to say. It's much more protracted language than Luke had used. And Matthew didn't really say much about it at all. I see, and it goes on. It keeps on going all the way to here. Don't worry, it's the Holy Spirit speaking through you. So, from here to 97 plus 30 to here 439 plus 30 which is going a little bit past the end point in Paul so he's spending more time on it because you got all that extra data from Paul he's stressing the fact of the, the, the persecution of Christians to Christians against Christians and of course against the Jews and everybody else 
and they call and this is what he's stressing as the bad thing as the flipsis okay birth pangs Council of Nicaea that stands for the Council of Nicaea it's occurring at the same years you know, the birth pangs of well it's not just the Council of Nicaea this is when they started jockeying for a position with Constantine and he decided he wanted control over them otherwise they'd have control over him and that's been a trend of history ever since okay so I'm going to stop this for a moment because I'm starting to cough again.